Hello everybody, Dan Brodsky Chenfeld from Skydive Paris here. You know, one thing all skydivers count on is this. When we have a malfunction, if we do what we're supposed to do, when we're supposed to do it, we expect our equipment to work. And you know what? It does. Modern skydiving gear is brilliantly engineered, and if it is assembled, maintained, and packed the way it's supposed to be, the stuff works. But we have to take responsibility for this also. The only way we can be sure that it'll be ready to go when we need it is if we do a complete gear check before every jump. You know, a gear check is the most simple, basic, essential thing that we can do to ensure our safety. And I'm constantly amazed by how many people that I see that don't do one at all or do some completely lame gear check where it's like they walk up and just go rings, pins, straps, handles, okay, it's all good, rather than actually doing a complete gear check. It's essential that you do a complete gear check before every jump. Now, three things about gear checks. One, don't do it the night before, or that morning, or 20 minutes before. Do it right before you put your gear on every jump. That's the only time that it counts. I could be jumping all day long, possibly doing team jumps and back-to-back -back jumps. Uh, the riggers at Skydive Paris who work on the packing mats are great. I trust these guys completely. There's times I'm walking up, they're just closing my rig right then as I'm picking it up to go get on a load. I still will pick it up and do a complete gear check right then, even though someone I completely trust has just closed it. It's my responsibility. It's my rig. I'm the one who needs to check it before I put it on my back. Second, uh, there's so many distractions at the drop zone. Doing a gear check only takes 30 seconds or a minute, but for that minute, it needs your full attention. Don't be listening to anybody else. Don't be talking to anybody else. Focus on what you're doing. Can't tell you how many times I've done a gear check, thrown the rig on my back, started running towards the airplane, and then thought to myself, did I check my AAD? Did I check my three ring? And had to stop, take it off, check everything again, and then go. Just because I was that bit complacent. Don't be complacent. Take the time, focus, make sure you're not being distracted by anything else while you're doing the gear check. All right. Third, make sure you have a process, a process that you do every time. So it's not, uh, it's a system that you use, it's a procedure that you do, so every gear check you ever do is the exact same way, checking the exact same things. This is the only way you're gonna be sure that you don't skip any steps. Because doing a gear check, you cannot skip any steps. You need to make sure that you see everything that there is. So I've got a rig here, I wanna demonstrate to you how I do my own personal gear check. Uh, there's different types of rig, there's some differences between them, uh, there's different processes that you can use for yours, but I want to show you one just as an example of what works for me. Okay, so in my process, I always start from the back. The first thing I check, I start on the top. First thing I check is the AAD. I make sure that the AAD is on and set for what I need it to be set for. For this vigil, it's set in pro mode. Okay, so I check that, it's on, ready to go. Then I start at one of the three rings. I look, see the loop? Loop through the little ring, little through the middle, middle through the big. And I make sure also the little ring isn't going also through the big ring. I've seen it before where someone put the little ring through the middle and the big. And if you just look quickly at it, it looks almost the same. The little ring should only be going through the middle, middle through the big. Then, roll it over, see the back side of it, and see that the loop is coming through the grommet, the cable is coming nicely through the loop, and there's no fraying or any damage to the loop at all. Come back to this side, make sure the RSL is properly attached, and the extra length of the RSL is properly stowed away. You don't need a big six inches of RSL hanging out here. All right, then I go to the other side and do the same thing. Loop through the little, little through the middle, middle through the big, roll it over, loop through the grommet, cable through the loop, no fraying on that at all. Then I work my way down the harness. The whole time I'm scanning the rig, I'm looking to see if there's any damage, if there's any fraying in the material at all. Uh, so scanning on my way down, I get to my cutaway handle, I see it's properly secure, I actually run my hands on the Velcro to make sure that it's nice and tight in there, cables are all clean, looking good. Work my way down the leg strap, harness, just again scanning, making sure it's all properly laced. Go back to the other side, 
work my way down here, get to the reserve handle. Again, make sure that it's properly secured. Velcro is sealed down the harness, all laced properly. Looks good. Turn it around from the back side. Uh, open the reserve up. Start at the bottom of the pin. Make sure the pin is straight. So on the other side of the loop, it's not bent at all. The loop's not frayed. It's nice and halfway underneath uh, in the loop. Uh, I grab the cable and I grab it on the other side by the reserve handle and I make sure that there's slack in the cable, that it's moving freely inside the housing so there's nothing inside the housing. And I see that the RSL is nice and clean. The seal is good, hasn't been broken, properly packed. All right. Close that up, open the main container, uh, make sure the loop is not frayed at all. The pin is nice, plenty, plenty secure and a lot of it going through the loop. Uh, also make sure that the color is showing in the window so another pilot chute has been cocked. Uh, and you want to make sure you've got proper amount of bridle on each side so that you know that when the pilot chute comes out it's going to be pulling on the pin and not on a flap. If the bridle is misrouted, it can look correct, but it can be pulling on a flap rather than the pin. This ensures you that the pilot chute is going to pull the pin first and not on anything else. Secure that back around. Come to my main pilot chute. Make sure it's not sticking out at all. It's all the way securely inside there. Right? The rig is done. Ready to go. Okay, that's it. That's the process that I use. Now, it's great to get a secondary gear check once you have the rig on, but the secondary check does not replace your personal check. Okay, skydiving is the epitome of personal responsibility. Nobody's gonna land your parachute for you, nobody's gonna do your emergency procedures for you, and nobody should check your gear for you. You need to check it for yourself first. You can get a secondary backup check, but that's already when you have put the rig on your back with 100% confidence that it's ready to go. So have a process that you do every time. Do it right before the jump and do it every jump. Thanks guys, stay safe out there.